Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited today to be a part of this video hop, celebrating my friend Ardith reaching 1,000 subscribers here on YouTube. That is incredible. Congratulations to Ardith. We are celebrating today with this video hop with over 20 participants. So as soon as you're done with my video, go into the description for the link to the next video and so on and so forth. Make sure you leave a comment on each stop along the way because the sponsors that you see here on the screen have lots of giveaways during the hop. So let's go ahead and just get right into my video. Today I'm going to be using the Altenew Watercolor Bouquet Stencil. This is a really cool stencil because it's got two layers to it on the same one stencil and I just think that is so very cool. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to add a little dimension with that today. This is also a bit of a different setup. I will be using Ranger Texture Paste, so I do have the camera off to the side a little bit so that you can also see my craft mat there right to the right. I'll be using a tonic palette knife and some glitter. I want to show you how I incorporate a little bit more interest into my texture paste from time to time. I'm also going to be using some Catherine Puller inks and I'll be using some Catherine Puller ink refills. I'm messing around with the stencil here a little bit because I'd like to figure out exactly where I want it to go. And I like this coming in off of the bottom here and sort of swooping up the card. And this actually changes a little bit later, but you'll see that in a minute. So I'm going to just go ahead and tape down everything so that it doesn't shift when I'm ink blending. So I'm going to be ink blending Lime Ricky onto the stem and the leaves, and I'll be using It's a Girl for the floral portion of the stencil. So as I start blending, you'll see I use a very light hand, and as I get farther up into that leaf there, you'll see that I get pretty close to the other portion of the stencil, which is the more detailed portion. And that is not a part that you are supposed to blend onto the cardstock right now. That goes over the first layer, which is what we're doing. So I'm going to take some tape and just tape right over that as well. That way I don't get any in that stencil. And if I do get it up that way, it doesn't go into the stencil or go onto the cardstock. So now I'm using It's a Girl for the floral portion. And I sped this up because it's pretty repetitive. I just make sure that I get a nice color on there. And you can see more towards the bottom, I do have a little bit of Lime Ricky sort of blended in there with the It's a Girl, but it doesn't bother me too much. It really was very quick, so if it did bother you, you could definitely redo it. But I just thought it was fine the way that it was. So I went ahead and cleaned off my stencil, and now I am going to put that more detailed portion directly over the first layer that we just blended. It takes a minute to set it up, but once I get it where I want it, I do the same thing and tape it down just to make sure that there um, is no movement when I go ahead and do my texture paste. To add color to the texture paste this time, I'm going to be using a dye ink pad from Catherine Pooler, and this is grass skirt. I'm going to just put it right on my craft mat, and I got a little bit there off to the side, so I'm just wiping that off with a baby wipe. And I'm going to add just a bit of texture paste right over top of that ink that I just put there on the craft mat. So I'm going to use my palette knife and just put a very tiny bit on there. A little bit really does go a long way. And plus I'm only doing such a tiny little portion of those leaves, so I really don't need very much. I want this to be very vibrant, so I'm going to use all of the ink that I put there and I have to be honest, before I started using texture paste, I was a little bit intimidated because I was unsure about what to do with it, but it's really, really fun. And especially if you get just the regular texture paste, you can add your own colors and your own glitter. And it's really just how, exactly however you want it to look. So I'm just going ahead and putting that right over the detailed stencil that's on the leaves. So anything that was blended with green and I'm just gonna smooth over to make sure it's a nice thin layer. I don't mind the texture on top, but I definitely don't want it to be bulky or fall off if it's touched or anything like that. For the floral section of the stencil, I'm going to be adding some glitter because I just think it would look really cool. 
if it was a little bit sparkly. So first, uh, this time I'm going to lay down my texture paste and then I'm going to take the Be Mine ink pad refill and just add a few dots right on top or a few drops, sorry, right on top. And I'm going to mix that around in the same way that I did the last time, only this time the color is on top. And I do speed this up because it is a very repetitive process as to what I did before. And I wanted it a little bit brighter, a little more vibrant, so I added some more color. And now I'm just going to go ahead and add some glitter right on top, and then I'll mix it around again. And this is just going to make a really fun, sparkly paste. I'll give you a close up in just a second. So as you can see, not quite as glittery as say a Nouveau shimmer paste, but it really does drive home the idea of sparkles and glitter and it's definitely visible once blended on there. So I'm doing the same process that I did for the leaves, just thinning it out a bit. And now I'm going to remove this right away so that I can go ahead and clean my stencil because this paste will dry on there and it'll just be pretty tough to get off. So as you can see, once I put it in the light in just a minute, that you can definitely see the glitter and I just love how this turned out. I love that the detail for the flower and the leaves is a texture paste and I just think it looks really cool. So I had in mind this old Simon Says Stamp kit stamp <laughs> that had this really fun uh, sending a summer hello uh, sentiment and I noticed that it was in a vertical layout and I just thought that it really would work better if the card itself were vertical rather than horizontal. So now I'm trimming the piece down to four by five and a quarter which is just a quarter inch smaller than an A2 sized card and I'm going to use my mini Misty to stamp this sentiment because I want it to be nice and bold black so I know that I probably want to stamp it twice and because I want to make sure it's in the same spot and that it doesn't shift when I'm stamping it, I just thought it was best that I use my Misty. So to stamp it, I'm going to be using Versafine Onyx Black Ink, and I'm going to stamp it here once, and then once more just to make sure it's very bold black. And then I'm going to put the card over a black piece of cardstock that's cut just slightly larger than the card front and slightly smaller than an A2 sized card. So the line in between the two, which honestly I'm not sure of the measurement at the moment, but on a paper trimmer you can see the line. <laughs> I'm going to use Tombow Mono Liquid Glue so that I have a little bit of wiggle room to move around the card front if I don't get it perfectly in the center because there is such a small margin of error here. Um, if it's off to one side, even just a little bit, you'd be able to see it with such a small matted background. And I laid down that white craft mat before I did this because I wanted to make sure that I could see the contrast between the black background and the black mat that I have. So I wanted to make sure that there was something white so I could see the contrast. So I'm going to now adhere this to my card base and I'm going to use some permanent double-sided tape for this. I think that there's already enough dimension with the texture paste. And then that's it. I am completely done with the card. I really love this. I love that there's a lot of color with pops of black. I think that the black sentiment really is popped out by the black matted background. And I just love this technique. I hope that you will give it a try. Let me know if you do decide to try it. And thank you so much for joining us on The Hop today. Congratulations to Ardith. Keep hopping along, and I will see you very soon.